This is the quad that I'm going to upgrade from Beta Flight RC2 candidate to RC3 using a nightly configurator, which links will be in the description. This is the Viper by Sugar K. It's my race quad. This one I use with my Insta360. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you how simple it is. All right, I'm on the GitHub page and I'm about to upgrade from Beta Flight configurator 10.80 RC2 to RC3, which is release candidate. Uh, hopefully very soon we will be going into the full release, but they're still ironing out a few little bugs here and there. Uh, nothing that has affected me personally, uh, only things I've done and normally things I've done and made mistakes myself. So I'll give you the link to this page. <clears throat> I'm using Windows, so you scroll down and you download the Windows installer. You click that. I just did this before, which is RC3. I always add RC3 on the end of it, or RC2, so if you need to go back, you can know where you've downloaded it to. I did that before the download and installed it, um, but my screen recording didn't get it all. So once you've downloaded that, you open it, you install it like any other program. Uh, once it's installed, you then open it. Once you're in, plug your quad in. Once you've opened Beta Flight, you can see them on the 10.8.0. Um, this is the RC3 candidate. Uh, you go into your CLI, you can either, you can use a default to get your old settings off your old quad. Now for me, I'm using, coming from RC2 to RC3, which is both 4.3. Um, so it's safe to do that on the RC1 to 2 to 3 because it's using 4.3. But if you're coming from 4.29 or lower, uh, your PIDs, your tune, your filters, all those types of things, you can't really copy straight across from your CLI dump because the change between 4.29 to 4.33 is very different. You will get a lot of red errors when you dump it back in, but you can still get your BTX tables. That will copy across, not a problem. Uh, your, these are your rates, you can jump them across, your OSD settings and everything like that will come across from 4.2 and previous, but just don't do your all of your master gyro stuff because you will get errors, you'll have to rebuild that yourself, but I'll show you how to do that in presets and it's so much easier. Another option is if you go into the presets tab now up here, before you do anything and upgrade it, you want to click save backup. So it's saving what I have on there before, whether you're in 4.29 or lower, or 4.3 RC1, 2 or 3. As you can see, I've got a few saved in here already. That's my RC2 car already perfect, so if I wanted to change it, I just click on that and put that one back in there, and it'll give me my settings for that. I'd need to downgrade it back to RC2 candidate as well. That's just the settings for it. So I can save this in here. So right now, because I did a prick like five minutes ago, I'll change this into RC3. Uh, and it should be good to go. So I save that in there. Now if anything does go wrong, I can then go back to, so say I was on 4.29, I can go back to that firmware, save my presets back in and have the quad running exactly as it was before. Um, that's an option to do, which is really good. And it also gives you a nice folder where everything is in. You can name it real nicely, know where all your different quad settings are. And so if you build a new one, you, you know, let's say I add number five Viper to the list, I can just come in there update the firmware, which we'll show you how to do next, and then I can just load my backups on and we're all good to go. From here, I'm gonna go into my CLI. So that hasn't loaded. So once you've, <clears throat> once you've got your, uh, your new configurator going, you go into your CLI. You wanna make sure all that loads up. Sometimes it doesn't. It might you know, you might have to disconnect and redo it again. Type BL, bootloader. Yep, update firmware, click the button there. Now make sure I'm on release and release candidate, because this is a release candidate. I'm using the HDRC FC F722. Go through the list, find what board you need, make sure it's the correct one. Make sure it's the correct one. And I'm going from RC2 to RC3, that one's the latest. RC3, you know you're on the right one. And like I said, just did this before so I'm not going to do it again. You go load firmware online, you wait until this finishes its load, yep, and then you click flash firmware and that will flash firmware. Remember when you click flash firmware it is erasing all the settings on the quadcopter so if you erase it 
install RC3 on it and then go out and fly, your props are probably going to, your motors are probably going to be spinning the wrong way. You probably won't have uh, your UART set for your receiver, so you won't even get a bound to it. So it really erases everything and you have to start fresh, but we go on to that and how easy it is next. Um, so everything in here now is set to default for that, the HDL RC board that I'm using default. So if I was to go out and fly now, the quad would not do what anything that I'd commanded from previous because it has erased everything. If you go into your ports, you'll have your UART 1 is normally always selected on the which is your receiver, but over here at UART 3 is where my uh, TBS Smart Audio is for my Rush Tiny Tank VTX. It's not there anymore. My receiver's not set up properly, so you have to go through all this again. Or I can simply get go back into my CLI and my default that I got before copied and pasted to clipboard, paste that into there. Get no red errors, which is good, and that's mainly because I'm coming from RC2 to RC3. And as you can see now, it's already selected that I've got serial, serial UART, and I'm on Ghost. I'll quickly turn my radio on. Switch warning. Yeah, yeah, switch warning. Select model, Ghost, select. That's done. And there we go. So as you can see, and that's all responding instantly. And that's all good. So I can do some quick checks. I need to, the first thing you do is set up, calibrate accelerometer. Never ever use this reset button, ever. Ever, ever for any reason. Port tab. I can see UART1 in Serial RX, which is my receiver, which is correct, and then this is automatically put UART3 as my smart audio, so it's correct. Now I know my quad, so I know that's right. Configuration, AK, AK, that's correct. This will auto generate, and you don't, unless your board's in different directions, you don't need to change any of the board sensor alignment. My name, Viper, I know this one needs to be 04 and X for Zing Boaters, it's the only one that I've got Zings. Your arming angle, you always want it 180. That means you can arm your pod in any position. So if you've crashed and you're on the, hanging off the side of a tree, you can still arm your pod. For me, racing, I only need these three, air mode, OSD, telemetry, beep configuration. I turn off everything that's related to GPS because it's not in there. Most of them don't actually have effect. It's OSD warning, so it's a preference thing in that, not a problem. Save and reboot, because I changed the name, so I want to do that. These are just the checks that I do to make sure everything's done right. ADC, yep, yep. Fail save, to make sure it's on drop. Presets, now this is the whatever one wants. If you are a racer and you are racing a good quality five inch race frame and others, I have this on a seven inch and everything and it works great. You simply, to get your filters and your pids to make this pod fly the best you've ever flown, you come down here, you click Karate Race 6S 5 inch, you click it, you click, you can choose some drop down settings here. For now, I just do D Shot 600. You can choose different uh, receiver protocols and everything, settings in there. I don't change it, I'm not that fancy. Uh, D Shot 600 is good for me. You breathe through this, you can make sure you have RPM filtering, so you need BL Heli 32s, or if you're using BL Heli 30S, you need to upgrade them on uh, either J, 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 ESC. And um, there's a couple others you can upgrade it to to bring them to to run RPM filtering. If you don't have it, you will burn stuff out. So make sure you read all of these warnings in anything that you pre-select in here. Anything that's green is official and has been proven to work, but you still have to read things. You have to make sure you jump through all the hoops. Reds are experimental, but generally they do work. But once again, read the things, you shouldn't have a problem. Pick, pick. You, yes, this only works with these settings. I agree, I know this works with my pod. Save and reboot. Right now, this is applying my filters and my PID tuning. That's done. Now my quad is already tuned and everything, that's great. So I can come in here and check. Now a lot of these, some won't work anymore at all because it's the way the tune's set and depending on what preset you're picking, whether they're open or closed. Now, one way to check that my CLI dump went in earlier is my rates are in there already. And my other rates that I use so that's a good thing. My rates are good, my PIDs and filters are good. Save that, still on the profile one. Receiver, yes, we're on Ghost, and we check that that's all working. Modes tab, 
I use the four as a racer. Arm, um, beeper, flip over after crash, and launch control. That's all I need. Save, that's what your modes does, your switches. Adjustment, I don't need any of this, I don't use it personally. Servos, we're not running servos on the race prob. Motors. Motor direction is reverse, spinning out, that's what I use on race on my racer, most people do. The D-Shot 600 is quick. Correct by directional D-Shot, yes. You want that on there, which is what is required for Karate 6S race. You have to have it on there. So like I said before, you need BL Heli 32 or the upgraded BL 30S. Um, I'm not going to do a test on the bench because I have props on because I'm crazy. OSD is a personal preference. The seal I dumped, I dumped in before is from this previous quad, so it's set up how I already want it. If you want to change things, you simply click something there, click and drag it around wherever you want it. I don't want that there. Personal preferences, all of these things. Uh, different warnings that you can run through. These are all personal preferences. If you're changing any of this stuff here, you can't do any damage to your quad if you, you know, not, that's not gonna damage anything. Video transmitter, and then normally you gotta dump in your VTX tables, once again from my, which I'll show you here, this is my dump, that I, the default that I did before. This is all those settings that I've changed. It tells me what version I'm when it was last updated, which I only did two days ago, in fact, so. My board, the name. So when I get this, that's my VTX tables, that's what I dumped in earlier with everything, so it's all done, every change that I've done there. And then when, when I applied the Karate 6S tune over the top, it will change whatever needs to be changed in here, but I'm assuming that the PID tune for that is, and filter tune is identical anyway. We're just going from RC2 to RC3, which will be just wiping out a few little bugs and issues there, just so we can get to that final release, hopefully soon. Get that out of the way. So I know that's good, I'm on channel one. I don't want to be on max, it shouldn't be that. Oh, actually this is my film with this one, so I do long distance with it. So that's why it was on that one anyway, I'll leave it that now. Sensors, I don't need, love, black bolts, blah, blah, blah. And that is as quick as upgrading from RC2 to RC3. If I go into, I'll just talk through a few things quickly. Motors in here, you can reorder your motor direction. In the wizard, <coughs> what you do is you click start spin motors and number one will spin and this is telling you it needs to be spinning that way. If it's spinning the opposite way, you can click on it and reverse it instantly like that. Same as your reorder motors. You can't do it because I don't battery plug in. Reorder motors, if you've got your orientation of your board in a different direction, you just have to click on oh, number one's actually in the bottom position, number two, it tells the FC which way it needs to go, and it's so much easier. Really good. Uh, we'll go to the presets quickly, which is what everyone likes. If you don't know, if you know if it's a new build and you don't know what you what your VTX tables is, you can't find it, you click in your categories VTX, and these are all preset VTX tables that you can just click, so Rush Tiny Tank, Tiny Tank Racing Ultimate, you click that, you click pick, and, it autom and then save and reboot, and there's your VTX tables, and it's so simplified, and it's so good. Another good thing is in your receiver tab, something that 4.3 has is your IRC Ghost uh, protocol. I've been using that for over a year now in 4.3 nightlies, and I have had, I, honestly, I don't even know what my ghost settings are on the set on my module because it stays at 99. I've done three or four Ks on my settings. I'm currently running race 250. TX motors in auto in my region is Oz because I'm in Australia. So, and I've done three or four Ks in this behind mountains, not in line of sight, and I don't drop below like 95. It's been incredible. So, if you're on Ghost and I'm on Ghost 10, 1050 or 1050, I've been on that for ages. I don't think I'll ever change because I can't fail safe. I physically can't fail safe. So, if you're on Ghost, you want to be on 1050 using 4.3, any version RC123 configurator and you can have IRC Ghost, and it's bloody amazing. All right, so what I'll do now is I'll quickly go out and show you a quick hover in the backyard and do my test, and that's as simple as how to get a race pod racing. Test this now. 
I've just updated it as you saw. I'm gonna check, make sure my props are spinning out, spinning out, spinning in, spinning in. Everything should be good to go. Telemetry is recovered. Move it up a bit. Try not to hold it too hard. First thing I'll do is arm it and uh, make sure it sounds all right and then I'll change the directions. First thing to do is arm. Yep, good. I'll give it a little while. The reason you do that is if you've got your props on the wrong way, motor direction's going the wrong way, you'll notice straight away it's not doing what's commanded, which means as soon as you put the throttle on, it's going to flip out. So I know now it's safe to put some power into it. And it sounds great. That's, that's good and it sounds brilliant. And then I like to do a pop up in the air and a roll. Just make sure there's no desync or anything like that. Um, but as far as I know right now, the quad is doing brilliantly. Simple as that.